New information coming to light in the case of two dead beat ass parents near Baton Rouge, Louisiana, charged in a severe case of neglect. Now, we first told you about this story last night on The Factor. Sheila and Clay Fletcher are now out of jail after being indicted on second degree murder charges. Their 36 year old daughter died in a way no one should severe and extreme neglect. She literally marinated in a couch for years years, basically melted into it and was found covered in feces, urine, and we're told large maggots. Chris Nakamoto, an investigative reporter in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, broke the story with my former photographer in Baton Rouge long ago, Joe McCoy. Now, if you thought details of the story we first told you about were just disgusting, Nakamoto says there's more. He joins us on the factor now with where the parents are now. They actually had a bond set yesterday. It was $300,000 a piece. And then um, a bail bondsman came to assist them with that bail. But there was a little hiccup. He brought about $3,000 of money short that they needed to get out. So Sheila was able to get out last night, and Clay just bonded out this morning um, after they got some of the additional money. Um, it really is just a horrific case of neglect. Um, both of them were indicted on second degree murder charges Monday by a grand jury in East Feliciana Parish um, for basically letting their daughter who had autism rot away on a sofa, they believe, for possibly 12 years. Wow. So how long was she dead before they called authorities or did they call authorities? Give us the details on that because it's not too clear. Our sources think that she wasn't dead for very long. The parents were out of town the weekend before she was found. She was found uh, Monday, January 3rd, and they had called saying that their daughter was unresponsive. And then immediately when, you know, paramedics help arrived and then the coroner arrived, he said, you know, we need to treat this like a crime scene. Um, basically, he could tell it was just utter neglect. Um, literally, her her legs were embedded into the sofa and she hadn't moved from there it was basically from what we were told like a latrine or a cesspool um that she was living in just horrific conditions she had open wounds to the bone from her feet all the way to her buttocks and essentially had gnats and maggots all around her body oh my god that's just incredible and just so Damn sad. Now, how did they live in a house? Obviously, there are going to be smells. If she is sitting there in her feces, her urine, and sitting there for at least a decade, how did they live in that house? So that's what's so interesting. I guess they were just immune to the smell after living in the filth for so long. Listen, we got a picture from the living room of the floors that were buckling underneath the sofa, the wooden floors, because it was just layers upon layers of human waste, urination, feces, all on those wood floors. And essentially, the coroner told me when he had showed up at that house, he couldn't eat for a week. And he's a practicing physician who's been doing this for 30 years, and he's seen a lot of neglect before. He said he's never seen a case like this. One of her causes of death was starvation. And they said she was so hungry, she was actually eating parts of the sofa around her. Oh. During her autopsy, they found sofa foam inside her stomach, along with feces. Feces were in her nostrils. They were in her mouth and her hair. Just a horrific, horrific case. What do we know about these damn parents? Who are they? So what did they, they do for a living? I mean, just who are these people? They lived a normal life. The neighbors say they would see them come and go. They were always the church going type as they describe them, always in church every Sunday. The mother worked for a prosecutor in the city of Zachary, which is probably about 15 minutes from where they live. And it's not really clear what the dad did. He may have been involved in some nonprofit type work, but it's really kind of unclear what he did for a living. Some of our sources say that the daughter who was nonverbal at the time of her death was very verbal when she was in school. She was on the volleyball team and she could recite things, things like that. Some of the people that went to school with her. So it seems like she 
really digressed over the last few years. And the parents, instead of picking up the phone to make a call and say, hey, we need some help over here to treat our daughter's condition, they just let her rot away on a sofa. It's literally one of the most disturbing stories we've ever covered in my 15 years doing this here in the Baton Rouge area. It is just mind blowing. And so did they ever have visitors over to the house, uh, relatives over to the house? What did people say if they did, or did they just keep her locked up? Was it, was she placed in like a living room or some secret room where no one would see her in that house? So from what we're being told, she was actually in the living room and here's the kicker, the mother literally had her recliner next to the sofa where her daughter was literally rotting away. And so oh was positioned, the sofa was positioned in front of the TV and she apparently had been there for possibly up to 10 years or so. Um, we talked to one of the neighbors who I had asked, hey, have you ever been in their house? He said, yeah, I've been in their house. Well, how long ago was it? He said, 15 years ago. We actually broke the news to the neighbor that Lacey had died. He didn't even know that his own neighbor's kid across the street had died five months ago. So they kind of kept to themselves. And it seems like over the past few years, they really retreated and they were basically like hermits, not really coming, um, inviting people into the house. Right, because certainly right. I would think if people were in the house and witnessed that and didn't do anything, you know, Louisiana is one of the mandatory reporting states. Those adults would have a real responsibility to report the neglect that they saw. And if someone was aware of this happening, they could possibly face charges too. That is just incredible and mind blowing. And you see so many pictures with the mother and father with their LSU shirts on out having a good time all while their daughter is sitting there just wasting away and dying. Uh, so what's the next step for prosecutors now? Obviously you said they uh, are out on bond. And so what's the next step now for investigators and prosecutors in the case? So the next step now, now that they've been indicted by a grand jury, is they'll have an arraignment where they plead guilty or not guilty. And then as that happens, then the process will move ahead with, you know, motions, hearings, and then possibly a trial date um, that will be set. But that probably won't happen for a few more months or so. But the autopsy was completed back in March and it was immediately ruled a homicide, Lacey's death. And the big question that a lot of the public here has is, why did it take five months, if she died in January, to arrest the parents when everybody who showed up that night realized this was a problem? They'd never seen anything like this. The stench hit them like a ton of bricks the minute the door was opened. So how in the world did it take five months to arrest these parents? And from what the sheriff said was, they wanted to make sure that all their I's were dotted, T's were crossed. They knew that this case was going to a grand jury this week, and they wanted to see what the grand jury was going to do. And I think prosecutors were pretty clear they were going to be able to get a charge of cruelty to the infirm or maybe even manslaughter or negligent homicide. But no one really expected that they'd be able to get a second degree murder indictment, which, if convicted, would carry a mandatory life sentence in prison for the parents. And so second degree murder shows they had intent to kill their daughter who literally rotted away on the sofa for all those years. And it appears they did nothing to help her. That's horrible. Well, all right, Chris, once again, excellent job in reporting. You guys broke this story and it's just so sad and disturbing that someone had to go through this, but we appreciate the effort that you guys do uh, and make right there in Baton Rouge.